Yeah, so I'm going to speak about uh, volar rim fractures of the distal radius. <clears throat> I do have a disclosure that I receive uh, industry standard per diem allowances. What we're talking about are fractures that are distal to the watershed line. Those which are proximal, we know you can use a volar plate and uh, deal with them quite safely. At times, dorsal fragments like what Pankaj was showing can safely be captured by screws from the volar side and stabilized. So they do well if we take good care of them. But what when you're faced with a fracture like this? You want to fix this because we've seen the ligaments, uh, all of Greg Bain's work is all active in this case. And then you have to devise new strategies to try and get this down stably enough to start them early mobilization. So what you need to do is to open, reduce, and fix these fragments with temporary K wires. Obviously, the rim fragment will remain a little unstable because this is more of a ligamentous injury than a bony injury. It's an avulsion fracture. So as Pankaj did mention, what you do is you take ethibon sutures through the ligament that is attached to the fragment, to the big fragments. You take as many as you need, and then you thread them through the holes in a distal radius plate. So there are these positioning holes that are one millimeter or 1.2 millimeters. So you can pass this needle through that, thread the plate across, put it down on the bone, get the big screws in, and then tie this off and leave your uh, temporary reduction wires in. So that gives you a very strong, stable unit, and you can then start. You can see most of the angles have been restored, and this fellow gave a very rigorous physical uh, test to become a policeman. <clears throat> Rim or edge fractures like this, which are seen, can easily be treated with this very big and bulky looking plate, but it's a fairly safe plate if you use it correctly. So this is a rim plate and it can crawl up to the very edge and still be fairly safe. So you've got variable angle screws that you can fix down and you can get an absolutely beautiful looking articular surface, even of these very difficult rim fractures. This doesn't look so ominous. And a lot of us would tend to just leave this alone in a plaster. But we do understand that these areas are critical. And when you take a CT scan, you get a horrific picture. Now you're worried because everything seems to be disrupted. And you can't get these because these are so thin and small. So what do you do? What happens is the load bearing on the radial side is distributed equally to both the dorsal and the volar aspects. But on the ulnar side, what you find is that where the teardrop is, it's going to try and subluxate this fragment over the plate and that's why you get these fra uh, uh, fractures that slip over the plate and fall down with the carpus. So you must understand this small concept and that is the key corner concept, which means the carpus goes with one main fragment. That is the key corner. If you put that back to the main fragment, you'll be able to get uh, a good reduction. So here's the same patient. And what I did was I put in a plate at the safe place where I could. Then I got in a wire to hold the ulnar side up. And then I got the other wire in along the articular surface. Now I want to bend this and I pull this across and get the fragment to reduce. Now how do I do that? I do this while I'm drilling. I put in a mosquito forceps. The ring of the mosquito forceps is there, pulling it down, doing exactly what I was doing otherwise, and then I get it driven across. So it doesn't snag on anything, or my finger, or my glove, or the gauze piece, or anything. So it's very easy to do this. Once you do that, leave that wire in. Now you can see in the lateral view, you can see your pin going all the way down to that teardrop, holding that teardrop as well, and the plate is buttressing what you want to buttress to get a good result. <coughs> Here's another one that looks like it, it's not fixable. So what do you do to these? So here again, you open reduce it, pin the main fragments with one millimeter wires, withdraw these wires when, the, when you look at it in the lateral view and it's come to the dorsal cortex, withdraw it a little bit and bend these wires and then tap them back in. Once you've bent the wires, you can put your plate on top and sandwich these wires underneath the plate. So you cut them short and you sandwich it underneath. And in this case, I did see that the pin is protruding out on the dorsal aspect. 
but you've got the articular surface in place. It looks absolutely wonderful, and the plate sits in well. Cover the plate, and I did an intraoperative ultrasound to find that the pin is not snagging on any tendon. And this is a video he sent in during the COVID times, showing a fairly good result with some restriction of his palm flexion. This is a 36-year-old male who fell from his bike and sustained this fracture and was plated elsewhere and the radial side just slipped off. So we've seen if your plate is not of a good design, if you haven't got a screw in the radial styloid, even that can slip over. And a few months later, he came to me with hardly any movements in his wrist and practically very little pronation and supination. And there was this ulnar sag. So in this one, we needed to go in and you can see the blue arrow at the bottom showing you how the radial styloid has slipped over. It's the ulnar side, the teardrop that normally slips over, but here the radial side has slipped over. So it's all because of those ligaments and here again I use the rim plate without any grafts to put it back into place to get a very good result. So remember, <coughs> volar rim fractures are highly unstable. These are ligamentous injuries. They often are the key corner and take the carpus with them. So even if you have a good plate that looks that it's nice, it might not serve the purpose unless you've stabilized it. You can devise strategies from available hardware that, and there's nothing special that we use. And you must try and prevent malunions because they're very, very difficult to treat. Thank you for your attention.